Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian Movie Enthusiast, and this is my review of the Happy Ghost franchise. Five Hong Kong supernatural comedies that have a tiny dash, just a little sprinkling of horror mixed in. Now I did not review these movies in my Asian horror playlist, primarily because they are comedies first and foremost. But I wanted to mix up this October with some lighter films, so here we go. All of these movies, with the exception of Part 5, are available on Region A Blu-ray from Hong Kong. I purchased all of them from DDD House. Again, with the exception of Number 5, which is only available on YouTube. So let's go through them one by one. The first one, Happy Ghost, 1984 Hong Kong comedy. This film is about three high school students. They go on a picnic near a beach, taking shelter from a sudden storm in an uh, abandoned temple. They find a piece of rope and end up taking it home. Within this rope is the spirit of scholar Pick, played by Raymond Wong, whose archaic ways of thinking clash with the values held by 20th century teenagers. Yet, they begin to make friends with each other. So the opening scene is kind of has a light spookiness to it. Uh, it's basically filmed like a classic horror film with a man hanging himself with a rope. Then it immediately cuts to our girl protagonists in the present day who are like frolicking in the forest uh, and the beaches. And as it turns out, they intentionally chose a haunted beach so they wouldn't be disturbed by other people. Not the best idea, but okay. And then some boys show up and uh, beseech them earnestly, as I like to say. In any case, a rainstorm approaches. They seek shelter in a dilapidated building. And then the haunted rope is found, which has our spirit. Now, the humor in this film is not especially intelligent, but it is oddly amusing in its silliness. And it's better than your typical Hong Kong comedy. I did actually laugh out loud during some of the uh, earlier moments with the boys and the girls interacting. And I would have to say the high school girl uh, Olympic sequence, all right, is probably the highlight of the film. I mean, you have tons of ridiculous stuff happening, like characters defying gravity, because this ghost that's within the rope, you know, befriends them and tries to help them out in their everyday, like, problems. So it's like, okay, I'm going to give these girls, like, supernatural athletic abilities to help them. But, like, you know, you have these characters doing these death-defying, like, jumps and stuff, and none of the characters in the film think that it's especially odd. You know, at some point, someone would say, like, wait a minute, what's happening right now is not physically possible. Something's going on, but that doesn't happen during that scene, which makes it even more, like, entertaining. And then each of the girls has their own, like, dilemma. And this ghost gives them advice and uses his magic to help them with their dilemmas. Now, I do think the, the teen actresses in this are pretty charismatic and very fun to watch. The lead actor, a, uh, Raymond Wong, also does a good job playing, like, the ghost character. And he plays this ghost character in the rest of the franchise, so that's nice to see. Of course, there's a, a Happy Ghost theme song that plays... And it's actually very catchy. It's like an 80s spooky ghost pop song, I guess you could call it. But it's quite good. Uh, I would say this film is basically family-friendly stuff for the most part. Now, there are a few references to Playboy magazine. And there is one sex scene that is not shown but referenced. So it might not be completely family-friendly, but it's, it's pretty close. Uh, I would say The Happy Ghost is legitimately entertaining and probably more entertaining than I suspected going into it. And uh, the Blu-ray transfer is uh, very nice as well. So I would recommend this, actually. Now, the sequel, Happy Ghost 2, from 1985, which was only one year later. So the, can they keep up the energy? Well, this film is about... The Happy Ghost again, played by Raymond Wong, of course. But this time, the ghost gets reincarnated and is now a high school teacher who was born with supernatural powers, but doesn't really know how to use them appropriately. 
he's assigned to teach a class full of naughty students, mostly schoolgirls, who like to pray, uh, play pranks on their teachers. And he becomes a victim of his students. But, with the help of a school worker, he learns how to avoid their pranks. So the timeline in this film makes no sense compared to, the, to its predecessor. Like, this spirit was reincarnated in 1984 during the first film, but it's now a full-grown adult in 1985. So, not sure how that works out, because reincarnation usually works at the point of like, birth, right? So that was, I don't know, that was quite odd and confusing. In any case, this dude gets all he bargained for with this class of students. I mean, these girls are horrible. Like, they've driven off, like, seven teachers already because they bully the teachers uh, to quit. Or, in their own words, this, this is what these school, school girls say. They say, uh, quote, The teachers can't stand the new generation or the pressures of modern society. Unquote. So it's almost like they're testing these teachers. Like it's a craft test to see if the teachers can take it. And all the teachers have quit up to this point. So our main protagonist is fortunately very spunky and capable when he's confronted by these girls. Uh, and he has supernatural powers to help him. But these girls are so bad as students, they, fr they still frustrate him. Even with supernatural powers. And they try to make him quit. So... Gotta give this movie credit, it's different from the first film. It, it really is, and gotta give it credit for that. I mean, our protagonist isn't even a ghost anymore, he's like a human. So some of the girls from the original film are recycled, um, as well as the uh, uh, ideas, I would say. The actresses are different, but a lot of the stuff is kind of recycled. Like, there's sporting events with supernatural abilities, stuff like that. But... They do change things up. Like, the sport in this film is swimming and water competitions, as well as volleyball. And the element of pranking your teacher is explored far more here. Uh, it's classroom warfare, basically. And that gives the film some energy. And some of the teacher's counterattacks on his students are pretty clever and surprising. So, I like the give and take here in this between the characters. And our male lead is still... Despite being capable in some sense, he's a total buffoon and klutz when it comes to uh, approaching women. And that becomes one of the, uh, the, the main themes of the film later on. Now the girls in this, not as likable as the girls in the first movie. Okay, It is part of the premise for them to be mean and do pranks on the teachers. But some of their pranks are really mean-spirited. It's kind of off-putting, really. I mean, they're really trying to get this guy fired. Like, seriously. And it does make it a little bit difficult to connect with some of the teenage uh, girls in this film. But, they do kind of come around uh, as the film moves along and become more likable uh, near the end. So that's good. And just when you think this movie is over, we get an unexpected finale involving dancing. Uh, that's all, I'll just leave it at that. So Happy Ghost 2 is an entertaining sequel. A few scenes on the Blu-ray, ironically, were like blurry. I was like, what is going on with this Blu-ray? There's a few blurry scenes and slightly sped up frame rates. Uh, but it's only occasional, uh, so it's not a big deal. But I, I thought the transfer was kind of weird in this. And again, this is the Hong Kong transfer I'm talking about. But yeah, this movie's worth checking out. So now we get to Happy Ghost 3. Okay, from 1986. They're not wasting any time with these films, people. We got a film from 1984, a film from 1985, a film from 1986. I mean, they're churning these out. So, uh, is it even possible that this third film could be even remotely good quality? Well, let's find out here. Happy Ghost 3. The film is about the spirit of a dead female singer played by Maggie Chung, and she waits in the afterlife for a chance to be reincarnated. And she meets the supernatural godfather, played by Choi Hark, of all people, who has found an appropriate musical family for her to be reincarnated. And her opportunity to be born into the new family is ruined by a schoolteacher, played by Raymond Wong, 
who takes the pregnant wife to a wrong hospital. So the reincarnated spirit goes to a hospital, ready to be reincarnated, but she goes to the wrong hospital because our human character takes the wife to the wrong hospital. It's kind of weird uh, logistics here, but that's the way it goes. So Maggie, the spirit, is pissed off because she missed her chance of reincarnation. So she has to wait a month for a second chance. But in the meantime, she harasses Raymond's character uh, for messing with her plans. So, okay, kind of a bizarre premise. But the thing I was most surprised by is that some websites actually list Johnny Toe as the director of this movie. I had no idea until I looked at the credits during my most re recent repeat viewing just a few weeks ago. Like, I swear someone else was listed as director years ago when I saw these movies. But, uh, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, regardless, if Johnny Toe actually directed this, and Maggie Chung is the star, it's probably enough of a reason to check this movie out. Maggie causes a lot of problems, okay? Um, she embarrasses our human lead, protagonist, and his students by possessing them to do things they normally wouldn't do or by manipulating objects. Quite an unusual premise. Again, they try something different with this third installment, which you gotta give it credit for. And it does make it distinguishable from the last two installments. Lots of spirit possession scenes in this. This is what they go for. And then, so like Maggie's spirit will possess a character, make them do something stupid, and then the, the camera cuts to Maggie's spirit like laughing. Like at how she ruined their lives. <laughs> she succeeded at messing up their lives. Like that's her goal in this movie. Again, it's kind of wacky. Uh, but it, it is neat how she can like stop time, rearrange things, and then restart time. Which is pretty neat. Uh, Maggie does act pretty cute. And she smiles a lot. Which uh, is pretty cool. You know, I like seeing Maggie Chung in upbeat performances. Because some of her popular roles are pretty downbeat. So I like seeing her in like this uh, these fun movies. She's fun to watch. And a few of the actresses from Happy Ghost 2, like the teenage girls, return to this one. Uh, including Fanny Yun and Shireen Chan. And uh, they're good. Fanny Yun in particular is good at acting evil, I thought. So when Maggie possesses her and she acts evil, I like those scenes. And uh, yeah, it's good. The car chase and the ending are very different, to say the least. Again, it's a good thing about some of these Hong Kong movies from back in the day. They're just so crazy. Like, it, the, the finale in this movie is just insane. And when you think about the consequences and events that would occur after the movie ends, it's something you rarely see in movies. I mean, there's some movies you'll see where it's like, the movie ends, and then, like you'll be, you'll have a good time, and then on the way home in the car, you'll be like, "Wait a minute!" Like if the movie continued, our protagonist would be completely screwed. Like they would be arrested or something by the cops for what they did, or their life would be ruined. And that's what you get here. <laughs> you know, like the movie ends, and you're like, "Oh, this is a happy ending," but then like five minutes later, you're like, "Oh man, this guy's life is completely ruined." <laughs> So I found it to be very amusing. And this movie takes that to the extreme when you think about it. So Happy Goes 3. It's a good flick. It's pretty entertaining. So, yeah. And again, uh, I mean, you got Johnny Cho, uh, Johnny Toe and Maggie Chung. So. so the first three installments of this franchise are kind of entertaining, I would say. Can the fourth film? reach that level of entertainment value let's find out happy ghost 4 1989 maybe maybe that was the problem they waited three years to make the fourth film group of college kids discover the remains of an evil warlord from an old cave bring it to their dormitory which ultimately awakens the warlord's ghost he seeks revenge but the happy ghost tries to help our protagonist so this plot, very similar to the first film in the franchise. The opening scene is in black and white. Shows the warlord getting murdered by a woman. Uh, then we cut to the present day, which immediately infuses comedy, of course. We get, like, a bowling scene that's kind of decent. 
a beach scene with the boys and girls. Not as funny as you were hoping for, especially compared to the scenes in the prior films of the franchise. In my opinion, the humor in Happy Ghost 4 does not work as well as its predecessors. Uh, there are times when I typically will uh, laugh out loud during these movies, but in part 4, it didn't really happen much. Not as effective or memorable, possibly because the creativity in part 4 is not as wacky or nutty. I think with every installment with this franchise, the story focuses more on Raymond Wong. Which is good in concept, because he is the happy ghost. But I feel like he's better utilized as part of a large ensemble cast. Which keeps the interaction kind of fresh and interesting. On the positive side, though, I do think I enjoy the subplot of the hitman. Who keeps killing our main protagonist. And then keeps seeing him alive again. So he'll, like, kill Raymond Wong's human character. And, like, supernatural shenanigans will occur, and he'll be revived. And, like, this hitman sees him again, and he's like, Man, I killed you before! Like, what is going on? So he kills him again, and then he shows up a lot. So I, I really like that dynamic. I thought that was pretty funny. I think it worked well. And uh, the hitman's frustrations are fun to watch. Probably the best individual element of the movie. Also, invisibility is used more in this one. They use the invisibility gag. Instead of like the demon possession gag of the of uh, one of the prior installments, and it's it's pretty good. It's always fun. Invisibility gags are, are usually fun to a degree, and then the finale involves the interaction between humans and paintings, which is a little bit different. So, despite the fact that I think Part Four is like a step down from like its prior installments, it's still watchable. You know, it's a little bit different from stuff you typically see, and uh, it's pretty good. And then finally, we get to Happy Ghost 5. 1991. This is a tale about a young woman's dog who makes a deal with the Happy Ghost, played by Raymond Wong, of course. And the deal is that the dog can become human for like 40-something days, but after those days are over, he must go and be reincarnated. Okay, all right. Now, the lead actress in this film is Chris Aquino, who is a huge celebrity in the Philippines, like massive celebrity. So one of my problems with Happy Ghost 5 is that it doesn't really feel like a Happy Ghost movie. Uh, Raymond Wong returns, of course, but it feels like a movie that could have been made anywhere in the world. You know, I... You know what? I haven't even looked this up. I'm pretty sure Disney probably made a movie like this. You know, a dog or some animal animal that turns into a human and like wacky hijinks ensue. But uh, this particular film, just it doesn't feel like a Hong Kong movie from the time period. And maybe that's because they were aiming for a more international audience uh, due to the casting of a popular Filipino actress. I don't know. Uh, some shots during the opening sequence are from the perspective of a dog, which is cool. You know, he grabs some slippers for his master, catches a car burglar, uh, does not get along with the boyfriend, who's a real freaking jerk in this, by the way. There are also some, you know, little ways that the dog acts like a human, which I will not spoil. So early on, the movie's okay. But after a while, I realize that this movie is way too one-note and straightforward. Uh, it lacks surprises and genuinely fun moments. You know, after this dog becomes a human, he has difficulty acting like a person. So he frequently reverts back to acting like a dog sometimes. So watching a, a man act like a dog is a joke that gets old pretty fast. <laughs> and this movie really taps it. I mean, it milks it to the point of oblivion. So, by the time we get to, like, the restaurant scene during the midpoint, I was done with this movie. Like, how many times am I going to watch a guy act like a dog and, like, try to find it funny? So, it's not good. Uh, there's a supermarket robbery scene that I guess is okay. Not a lot of highlight moments in this one, though. Also, I know that these movies are not realistic at all, historically, 
But the fact that a woman would continue to hang out with a man who acts like a dog is freaking ridiculous. Like, it's just too stupid and distracting. Given all the ridiculous shenanigans in the first few movies, I found the premise of this one to be the most distracting. Unbelievably. It, it, it just, it makes no sense. It makes you appreciate the craftsmanship of the uh, original films. So, ultimately, I have no desire to rewatch Happy Ghost 5 again. Uh, I will gladly rewatch the first three movies of this franchise, and occasionally Part 4. Part 5, nah, I I'm done with this. But, if you're really curious... You know, Happy Ghost 5 is available on poor quality YouTube video uh, in Tagalog language without subtitles. So, uh, if you were to watch it like I did, I suppose there's a chance the dialogue could have saved this if it was translated. But given the type of gags on display, I highly doubt it. So, I actually do not recommend Happy Ghost 5. So, I would say this. If you're even remotely interested in some, like, supernatural comedy shenanigans from Hong Kong... Check out Happy Ghost, the original, which is the best of the bunch. You know, if you have to blind buy it on Blu-ray from DDD House, do it. Check it out. If you like it, then check out Happy Ghost 2 and 3 on your next serving. And then if you like those, then you can, like, risk Happy Ghost 4. <laughs> then, you, you know, so gradually your, your, uh, your tolerance will increase. And then if you like four, then maybe check out five, maybe. But uh, it's kind of a it's a slippery slope with this franchise, folks. But I do think that even though these are Hong Kong supernatural comedies, I do think the first three films are, like, legit entertaining. I, I like them, even though they're really, like, wacky and wild and maybe not particularly well-written. So those are my reviews of the Happy Ghost franchise. If, if anybody has actually seen these... Let me know what you think. And as always, I will see you next time.